Okay, this is part two of adding a user to my SharePoint in practice tool site uh, using Power Automate Flow. So this is going to cover adding a user, a guest user, or more accurately, inviting a guest user to a SharePoint site and all the little tricks to get that working. It was a little bit more complicated than I thought. So there's a few Power Automate flow tricks here and some HTTP calls. So the uh, where we got last time was we added through a form, we added items to this toolkit guest users list. Uh, and that form is anonymous so that I can send it out to people or include it in my book so people can ask for requests. And then what I want to do is once somebody is added to this list, another flow triggers and sends me a, an, an approval saying, hey, is it okay to add this user? And uh, when I say yes, of course, I'll always say yes. It'll go ahead and invite that user to be a guest and then add them to the members group. So let's take a look at the flow over here. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So this is the flow. So when an item is created or modified is the trigger. So this is what starts the flow, of course. And you have to put the address. And here is the list that is triggered. Now, this is created or modified. It's simpler to just do a when item is created trigger because I don't have to worry about modifications. But I wanted to be able to rerun the flow by modifying the list. So what I did was that I added a field in this flow that's called add guest and it's a yes no field so the flow will only run if this add guest field is set to yes and then when i update this record to say successfully added i set the add guest to no and that stops from re-triggering what they call an infinite loop so no infinite loops here because we go into the settings of this trigger and notice there is a trigger condition down here at equals trigger outputs body add guest is true so it's checking if this trigger outputs body add guest is true i use copilot to create these o data expressions so this is o data and if you tell copilot you need a trigger condition for power automate based on this field give it the field name and the field type it'll produce that trigger condition for you and it only takes a couple of tries usually. So only when the add guest is true does this flow start. And we initialize some variables. So I've got a text variable. This is the invitation that we send. And I've got a little variable here that is a Boolean, a yes, no, to see if the user has been created. I'll show you that in a moment. So here, start and wait for an approval. So this is emailing me to say, should you add this user, yes or no? And I'm just pulling the data from the list and uh, showing in the email where they purchased the book, where, when they purchased it, any comments. So uh, not real fancy here. You could pretty this up, but I didn't bother. I also included a link to the item in case I want to go and click and edit. Maybe they entered their a comment instead of a period in their email address so I can fix that before I approve. Okay. So that starts and waits for an approval. And then when the approval completes, when I go in and click yes or no in my email, it comes here to this next condition. And this is where you check, notice it says body slash outcome. So you check the outcome output of the start and wait for an approval action. And if it is equal to approve, not approved, just single approve, then that means it's approved. Otherwise, uh, it's not approved. And I just update the item to say, not approved. And notice here, the add guest field is set to no. So again, that stops it from re-triggering the same flow and doing an infinite loop. So that's what that field, how it stops from the triggering the infinite loop. Ah, infinite loops just last too long, don't they? So if it's accepted, then let's go ahead and invite that user. So first I re-get, I get the item again in case it's been modified above. I, I have all this data already from the toolkit guest users, but um, I'm just grabbing it again. And of course, it's the same item. This is the ID item from the trigger body, though the initial call of this flow. 
And then this is where it starts getting complicated. And this is where I had to learn quite a bit before I did this. This is a premium Power Automate action called HTTP. There are regular HTTP calls, but this is calling the graph API. And so it needs the premium. So I went and shelled out $22 a month to purchase this. Actually, I started with a free trial. Uh, there's a couple of steps in here that are about adding the app level permissions for this as well. Um, and I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, I may do a future one on that, but if you're stuck, let me know, reach out because in addition to this data, so it's, this is the invitations endpoint. So I'm inviting a user post content type. That's all necessary to be there. And here's the body. So the invited user email address, this is the email address from the, uh, the, that list from this toolkit guest users list. This is the title field. I've just renamed it to email address. So watch for that little nuance. In the invite redirect URL, this is where the user gets redirected once they accept the invitation. So I've just redirected, redirected to the website for now. Do we send a message? Yes. And here's the message information. So the message information is from that variable that you saw above. Okay. Now, other than that, we fill in these fields. The, the authentication type is OAuth. This is the tenant ID, audience, and secret value. Um, so we need all of this data to, to run the flow. So that sends an invitation to the user, and it looks a lot like this. Let me show you. I'll just download this picture here just so you get the whole image of it. Okay. So this is what they're receiving. And at the bottom, they have an accept invitation link. And that accept invitation link will try to log them into the site, send them a code, etc. So once they have logged in for the first time, then they are authenticated. They're added to the Entra Azure uh, user list. But until they are, we can't do anything with them. We have to wait for them to accept that invitation. So that's this next little tricky bit is we have a do until loop here. So it goes in, it waits five minutes, give them at least five minutes to respond, right? Then it attempts to add using this user's end, end point. I'm trying to add them to the members group so they'll be able to contribute in the site. So notice down here, the way this body is, it's just the, again, the email address with this uh, claims user ID structure. It ain't pretty, but that's what SharePoint, or in this case, Azure wants. So that's a really straightforward um, HTTP call. And then if they're not created yet after that five minute delay, this will fail. It won't be able to add them to a group because they haven't accept the invitation yet. So if it fails, this is where you have this catch, succeed, fail kind of structure in Power Automate. So notice the red and orange dots here that says timed out or failed. So this means that if, let me go in to click on this one in the settings, and this is the run after condition. So it says this action will run after the send HD blah, 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 blah is has timed out or has failed. So if this fails, this command is run. But otherwise, it's this one. Notice the settings says the user not created. If it is skipped, we run this command. OK, so this is the way Power Automate handles those error conditions. So if it fails, then we say user created is false. If it succeeds, we say user created is true. And then the do until, of course, is as long as the variable user created is, it, it, we, we stop the loop when the user created is true, right? So it does until it's true. 
Okay, so that loops until we are able to add the user into the Microsoft 365 SharePoint group. After that, uh, that successful add into the group, then we update the item. So I'm, I'm updating the toolkit guest user item to say the date the permissions are granted and a little bit of text down here just so I can track it. And again, the add guest is set to no so that it will not re-trigger the flow and create a infinite loop. And then last but not least, I email them. So there's the email address again. You now have access. I give them a link, da da da. So a little bit of text in here using the send an email v2 command. And that's it. The only other step here is if this add fails, we come here and we update the item to fail so that I can say, oh, it didn't work. So add failed. So I'll be able to see that in the list. OK, that's about all there is to it. I hope that's useful for you. Please reach out. We have any questions or you have a similar use case you need to code. I'm happy to help. Alrighty, talk to you again soon.